Guilt is something that we all have. We can all relate to it. Whether it is us feeling bad in hindsight about something that we said, or not keeping a promise, we all feel that sinking, mentally draining emotion. Sometimes it eats away at you, gnawing in your psyche day after day, unable to fill the void that only seems to take and take every day while you sit there and do your best to fight the horrific emotional trauma and pray that one day, just one day, the empty, vacuous black space drilling further and further into your head will begin to feel with some semblance of what made you, you again. And then you play Amori and realize it never will. Not unless you do something about it. Close your eyes, you'll be here soon. Itchy knees and cheek of fun. Doki doki hong toni necktie. Demo kono wa do de ki nai. Omori is a game similar to Undertale and Earthbound. A light-hearted RPG that uses a unique setting with stylized graphics and a banger soundtrack to convey an unconventional story. In it, you play as Omori, a young, gray, stoic-faced little boy that lives in an infinite void of white with a singular light bulb hanging above him, the inside of which is complete blackness. It vibrates with an unusual pulse, but you've apparently been here as long as you can remember. Go outside and play with your friends. They're so happy to see you. It's all you've done for the past four years. Everything is fine. Everything is going to be okay. Omori is not who he seems, because you aren't really playing as Omori. You're playing as Sunny. But right now, everything is fine. Guilt is unique from feeling sad, but it also stems from shame, anxiety, humiliation, and frustration. If we don't do anything about these emotions, they will build up and intensify over time. Longer and longer, taking up more of our thought process until we hit a point where what we are feeling guilty of is often all we can think about. The person experiencing these feelings will want a way to repent for their mistake, or might isolate themselves until they feel normal again. But this is not always the best decision. Guilt that transcends into a burning depression is always possible almost no matter how severe the initial incident that caused the guilt to manifest is. People with depression can struggle to understand exactly what is inappropriate about their behavior when feeling guilty, thereby extending guilt to things that they are not responsible for and feeling guilty for everything. People suffering from extreme guilt or dealing with symptoms such as being sensitive to the effects of every action overwhelmed by possibly making a wrong decision, low self-esteem, putting others before yourself until it's detrimental, and avoiding the full range of your emotions. Guilt's relationship to other disorders is two-way. It can either cause a disorder or perpetuate one. 
OCD and depression are hand in hand as OCD is all about the reoccurring thoughts and actions that are uncontrollable, and guilt can act as an enabler for OCD. If you feel guilty about a thought or an action, it may stick to the forefront of your mind for a long time. The relationship between guilt and depression forms a self-consuming monster of negative thinking that can and often will spiral out of control. One of the most tragic instances of guilt is when it gets so deep, so internalized, and so unbearable that we begin to lie to ourselves. Replaying memories in our head to convince us that the reality that we are living in isn't as bad, or maybe it's used as a defense mechanism to help us get over the guilt. But this is never healthy, as the trauma is still there, brooding and bubbling to a boiling point just under the surface. When we experience guilt or depression, we often use the phrase, putting on a face. And while that cliche is so drawn out that it's made up of more crudely drawn lines than Omori has on his face, it's really true. And in Omori, you get to live it. You play through the game in an idyllic, made-up world called the Vast Forest, where Sonny is surrounded by people who love him and otherworldly friends where they can relive magical memories and Sonny can forget about... about... One day in this serene world, your best friend, Basil, goes missing, and it kicks off the events of the game. You need to find Basil and your group will go through hell and high water to find him. But as the game progresses, you find more and more suggestions and clues that make it seem that maybe, just maybe, there is a reason Basil vanished. Maybe a reason for this whole world existing. And maybe, just maybe, there is a reason why this doesn't seem to be the first time this has happened. The first time in the game that you actually play as Sunny, you find out early on that your sister Mari has tragically passed, and that you as Sunny have basically been living inside for the past four years as a hikikomori from grief. He can't eat well, he barely leaves his room, and is obviously not the same person that he used to be. When we go through a traumatic experience, our brain can sometimes jump through many hoops to prevent those experiences to be relived as a defense mechanism. And in Omori, it becomes clear that the entire half of the game where you play in the vast forest, you are in a world created in Sunny's mind as a defense mechanism. The trauma of his sister's tragic passing still relentlessly damaging his mental health, so he escapes the only way the human brain can know how. Throughout the runtime of Omori, you encounter your old friends in the real world and find out the harsh reality of Sunny living inside for the past four years. You find that Kel has developed a bunch of new friends and is trying out for the sports team. Hero has left for college and given up his younger dream that Mari insisted on of becoming a chef for becoming a doctor, which is what his parents wanted him to do. And Aubrey... Oh, Aubrey. Of these three friends, Aubrey has suffered the most. Someone who was so cheerful, vibrant, and bubbly as a younger girl was most affected by Mari's death. When you see her now, she's violent, angry, and deeply, deeply hurt. She accuses everyone for leaving after Mari died and has gathered a group of new friends that are bullies to everybody that they come across. She accuses the old group of friends for abandoning each other when they needed themselves the most. Blinded by rage and sadness, Aubrey seemingly can't forgive anyone for their treatment of Mari's memory and believes that everyone got over her death too fast and didn't grieve. So she has to do the grieving for everyone. She lets out her frustrations on Basil, who has also become a shut-in since Mari's death, and begins to bully him relentlessly. Near the end of the game, the old gang reunites for the first time in four years and end up back at Sunny's sister's grave and reminisce about the day that Mari died. They recall little details that they remember from that morning, such as Hiro shopping with his mom to buy some clothes, and Kel remembers that he and Aubrey were going to get their hair cut for Sunny and Mari's music recital, which all led up to them hearing the news that Mari had died. 
Now this may seem like just a little detail to make the characters and the world of the game feel more real, but you suddenly realize that a lot of the details in Sonny's life have become a part of his dream world, and this makes the story even more tragic than it already was. Sonny's normal life has been so affected by his sister's death that his brain has captured a lot of these little moments, and as a coping mechanism, put them into the dream world to hopefully be used as a way to forget the actual trauma of the event. Being used to remind Sonny of the good times before the event and lying to himself about the current state of his reality and... something else. Something... horrific. <laughs> Near the end of the game, you discover that Mari killed herself. Her friends and family fighting her hung from a tree in the backyard. The trauma of a family suicide is something that will often destroy a family, and in Omori, Sunny's family does just that. Sunny's father abandons the family, leaving just him and his mother. The trauma of Mari's suicide haunting the group of friends so much that they all disband from each other. Four years go by before the events of the game and what suddenly finally begins to reconcile with the truth. What do you do when you witness something so tragic and only do what you think is right for someone in the moment, but know in your heart that it was the wrong thing? You experience exactly what Basil goes through in the runtime of Omori. Withdrawn, nervous, anxious, depressed. You name a negative emotion and odds are Basil is experiencing it. The trauma Basil feels from Ari's death goes far beyond what any person in the game realizes. Sonny is the reason Mari is dead. It was an accident, but that doesn't change the fact that Sonny killed her. And Basil was an unfortunate witness. In the onset of panic and immediate regret of the incident, Basil being Sonny's best friend promises to him that everything will be okay and tries to fix the situation as best as he can, so he stages the incident as a suicide and does everything he can to stop either of them from being tied to the death of Mari. And for the next four years, Basil lives with this. The images of those last few moments with his friend, hiding all of the evidence, and the image of that body hanging from a tree, forever implanted in the mind of both of these characters. But Basil can't accept that Sonny was capable of something like this, so he makes up his own horrific mental projection of something standing behind Sonny, at the moment of the incident, so he can accept the circumstances of the death. It was something that pushed Mari, not Sonny. Basil lives with this truth for four years and due to the need to keep it a secret, it eats away at him. He becomes an outcast among his friends and becomes a nervous wreck. Every day for Basil is a nightmare and the image of Mari's hair tangled up at the bottom of the staircase haunting his life. And he did it all for his best friend. He fears every day and the possible onset of the truth being revealed and not only losing his lifelong friend but also everything else around him. When it is revealed to him that Sonny is moving away in just a few days, Basil has an emotional breakdown and has to calm himself because the one person that he sacrificed everything for is leaving him. Even before the events of the game, it is clear that Basil is living with abandonment issues as you find out that his parents are never around and he is living with a grandmother who is very sick and a caretaker named Polly that acts as a surrogate mother and father figure. After the incident with Mari, everyone in his life leaves him. Sonny becomes a shut-in for four years, Hero leaves for school, and Kel gets invested in sports and Aubrey begins to relentlessly bully him. And Basil, realizing that Sonny is leaving, is still riddled with guilt, can't accept a life where it's just him. He knows that the trauma of the event is only getting stronger and stronger as each day goes by. He sees his something more often, and you as the player can see the devastating effect that the events of the game have had on him. If you play through the game and end up in any of the endings that aren't the good ending, consumed by his own something and unable to confront the trauma and surpass the pain, 
Basil, in a state of extreme distress from the guilt eating away at him, will commit suicide with the shears that he uses for his plants. The only way out for Basil is to come face to face with what he did and stop running. But unless Sonny attempts to confront him and comfort him, there will be nothing left for Basil to hold on to, and he can only see one option to cleanse himself of the guilt. The voice in our head might be the worst thing about us. When coping with guilt and depression, our bodies feel tight all of the time. We can't think clearly, and it seems like that pit will never stop getting bigger and bigger. You think your friends hate you. You feel like everything you do is wrong. You just wait for the day that you feel it consume you from the inside until there is nothing left. You want to tell someone about this desperation, this thing eating away at you, but the fear of being ridiculed, hated more, and disowned by everyone around you just keeps getting stronger and stronger. You can't even consider that being among your friends is good enough to help because you feel like they're shunning you as you sit next to them. And when guilt is involved, you feel like there is no escape. If you are feeling this way over a secret, you can't imagine the repercussions of letting that out. Accepting the truth, no matter how horrific it is, is a fate worse than death and you end up retreating back further and further into this headspace because it's easier. It's safer and your memories that you decide to relive can always be positive. There is nothing harder than confronting yourself. So when you confront yourself in Omori, it is presented as an impossible battle. Everything seems stacked against you. Omori dealing damage that you cannot recover from. The only way to fight it is to reconcile. Cherish the memories of your friends and believe in yourself. Believe that it is the right thing to do. Believe that you are better than your mistakes. Believe in your friends. Believe in yourself and confront your trauma. Push through. Do not succumb. No matter how bad you beat yourself up, no matter how much it hurts, you have to believe in yourself and believe in others around you. If you can't, then no matter how much you struggle against the void, nothing will fill it. Nothing will make you whole again. It will take time. Everything in life always does, and this won't be any easier than that. It will be harder than everything. Do not succumb. Struggling against it all will be the hardest thing in life, and pushing against it will be even harder. Do not succumb. You are always worth it in the end. You have to believe in yourself. Do not succumb. Thank you.